the spectrum of threats that Singapore faces and our inherent vulnerabilities as a small nation with limited resources make the physical defence of Singapore challenging. Upon your shoulders is placed that onerous but sacred duty to defend Singapore's interests and way of life and to use whatever that is at our disposal to ensure that our people are kept safe and Singapore independent. Because as Mr Lee reminded us, without a strong defence, there will be no Singapore. We always say we stand on the shoulders of giants. Many of those who are retiring would be in the category of giants. They have laid foundations and uh, in their own way, they also have nurtured the next generation. Certainly in terms of uh, their contributions to the Air Force, we would definitely not be uh, what we are today without all their efforts. The servicemen and women who have gone through the thick and thin with every one of us bring with them different qualities and all the blood, sweat, tears that uh, we have shed. That spirit of excellence and the contribution they have given over the years is what comes to mind. Uh. I was hosted to the UAV community from the fighter community, so the learning curve was steep. La. So a lot of work was put in to keep the such a UAV reliable. Biggest challenge is the engine, okay? Because by design, this is actually not an airworthy engine. It is actually a, a lawn mower. And the most challenging would be to keep the searcher flying, which is a, a UAV. Because by design, we will lose a searcher UAV every 550 flying hours because it's very inherently unsafe. Of course, that's not the Air Force way. That is not our ethos. Zero accident is our goal, sacrosanct. And a lot of hard work is put in, whether to modify the design, to enhance the maintenance regime, to keep it flying safely. Eventually, we were flying it at more than six times the reliability. It is the, the mission that uh, really matters uh, and uh, being there for each other really helps uh, keep us going. Uh, and uh, no, no one complains. What really stood out were the nights. Uh, sometimes past midnight, spending the guys, just troubleshooting the aircraft, uh, making sure that uh, the aircraft will be serviceable the next day and ready for flying. Uh. So, it's a teamwork. Even now, when I've retired, when I meet ex-retirees, we will always tease each other, you know, that when we cut, our blood is blue. You know. So, that, that's the sense of identity, like, the sense of brotherhood. Like. A lot of them have been hosted to various different locations, not necessarily to a place where they instinctively know what to do, but they always pick up the job well, and this is the kind of thing that will be a lasting memory like, for those who are in service and those who have worked with them before. It's always that passion, always ready to go the extra mile. I'm the only one that went through Air Force, Army, Navy and joined. So I see the whole SAF and it was a great journey. Every coin represents an exercise or event that I participated. I always want to learn. I will really appreciate that every two to three years, we get a new posting. And that is, I think, one of the motivating factors to push me. I was given the opportunity to fly past the stadium and see the rehearsal. Although there's no audience, but somehow I can feel the song Singapura is being sang from the stadium. Somehow it's in the ear. Although the Chinook is 100 decibel noisy, but I can sense in, in my heart that the people are singing down there. If I can feel my hair steady and overfly it. <laughs> I think that, that is the most memorable fight I ever have. What is the one word to describe the entire experience for you? Actually, the word is happy. I was really happy to involve in all this. There's a lot of hard work put in, but once the mission is finished, everything went good and safe. It's just job well done. Everybody is happy. What would you say to the young servicemen and women looking to you for inspiration? Don't forget about the, the frame of fire that within you when you're doing a sign-up. Yes, throughout your whole 30 years career or even 35 or even 40 years of career, you will definitely hit some problem. Don't worry, there's a lot of friends behind you, beside you. Talk to them. As I said, always remember why you sign up as an airman and a woman. Trust the, the system, trust the process. It is rigorous, okay? And trust the training, okay? And tr finally, trust yourself. I want to thank all our uh, retirees really for paving the way 
uh, with all their service, their commitment and their various efforts. Each and every one of us built the Air Force together and this current and the future generations benefit from all the building blocks that our past and our present generations have put in. It really means a lot to all of us that you have given so many years of your time and effort to serve the Air Force. Big thank you to your families as well for being part of the extended Air Force family and sharing in this journey to serving and protecting our nation. I've personally worked with many of you at the various stages of my career and I'm really impressed by how much you put in, the passion you have. All of you will have paved the way for people who are still currently serving so they have an easier path to walk on. So thank you very much. I'm sure some of you will come back and serve the SAF in various capacity. All the best, have a happy retirement. At some point in time, you have been a supervisor and mentor to the people who are in the force now and I'd like to thank you for bringing up such an outstanding group of servicemen and women who is holding the fort now. Thank you. Because of you, Singaporeans sleep soundly at night. And because of you, ADOC is stronger. Thank you for all that you have done. And I wish you all the best in the next lap. I would like to thank uh, all those who have served uh, with or together with uh, Air Force Training Command. Your contributions have inspired us to do even more and to do even better. We stand on your shoulders to achieve greater heights. Special shout out to Roslyn, Sebastian Roslyn from UCHRMC, who retires after 50 years of service. Not many of us can lay claim to such a milestone, but you serve faithfully all the way right till the last day. You saw so many of us through, uh, right from our cadet days to where we are today. Thank you, Ross, uh, for your devotion to duty. Thank you for your friendship um, and really wishing you all the best in your retirement. Each of you left an imprint uh, on all the servicemen and women in the organisation today and it's really seared into the fabric of the organisation that allows us to build a uh, forth from here and become a much better organisation in the future and uh, allow us to meet the challenges uh, of today. For those who are still in service, please look at our group of officers and uh, servicemen and women who are retiring today. There's so much we can learn from them in terms of the ethos and, and the values that they have imparted. They have all left a mark, a mark of excellence, and that's what we believe in the Air Force, and I hope that all of us can strive to follow the example that they have set. I'm very proud to have served alongside all of you. For all those who are still in service, let's continue to work and strive together to build our Air Force, to be a stronger Air Force. And for those who are retiring, all the best, and best wishes for your future endeavours.